Okay, so you've got a new blog on your Squarespace website and you wanna know what are the best practices and how to actually post blog posts to your blog area. So I'm just in website and then under pages, gone into my blog section here. You can see a long list of all of my existing blog posts here on the left-hand side. If I want to edit any of these, all I need to do is just click on them here and it will open up in the right-hand side preview area and I can just go and click edit and make any edits that I need to the blog post. I can also edit any of the settings of existing blog posts by clicking on the three dots here and clicking on settings. Um, I'll go through all of these in just a minute. And also I can duplicate an existing blog post and delete an existing blog post if I want to as well. But if we're starting from scratch, let's just click the plus button. And this is gonna add a new blog post that doesn't have a title or anything on it initially and it will open up in the page editor. So just give your um, blog post a title up here and then you basically can edit a blog post just as you would a page on Squarespace. So you can add all of the same kind of content blocks that you might add to a page on your site, including text blocks, images, buttons, um, spacer blocks, uh, all sorts of things that you can add to um, your page. It will automatically have a text block added for you here. So you can essentially format, lay out your blog post how you want. You can add different headings. Um, I would add a heading two at the start of the blog post and then go straight into writing the content of the blog post here. If you need any inspiration for what to actually write as your blog posts, um, I have a whole online course called Blogging with Purpose, which teaches you how to write strategic blog content for your business that actually boosts SEO, converts customers. I show you how to understand your brand voice, create your content categories, generate infinite blog post ideas and outlines with the help of AI technology, and also how to actually structure and write your blog posts and have them all planned out four weeks in advance in a streamlined system. So go and check that out. If you're interested in the actual strategy behind blogging, I'll leave a link in the description. So as I said, you can add as many um, content blocks and make this post as long as you like and add as much um, content to it as you like. Um, then what you will notice is up in the top corner, it's asking if you want to publish it. Now, once you have finished adding in your blog post here, I would recommend that you do not hit publish straight away. What you want to do is actually click on save. Um, and then exit, and that will actually just save the blog post as a draft um, that no one else can see, but you still have edit access uh, to. And the reason for this is before you publish the post, there's actually some settings that you want to adjust for the blog post first before you um, publish it to your site. So if we go into the settings area here, we can see a few things to start with that you definitely want to add. And one is a featured image. So this is the image that's gonna display on any blog feeds that you have on your website. So for example, on my blog page, this is a feed of my most recent blog posts, which will display on your site as well on your blog page. And essentially, this is the featured image, this graphic that I've created here. I created it in Canva. You could create your own graphics or you could just upload a photo here to have as the featured image. But essentially, if I didn't have that uploaded, it would just display the title of the blog post here. Um, and that's just not really as appealing or clickable for people when they are scrolling through your blog posts. It's nice to have some kind of a graphic or an image here instead. So you always want to make sure that you are uploading a featured image to the blog post settings before you press published. You can also add an excerpt for the blog post and depending on how your blog is set up, sometimes this displays on certain websites, sometimes it doesn't depending on the format and the layout of your blog. Um, on my blog, I don't have an excerpt displaying. It's just essentially a sentence or two to describe what the blog post is about. But I've chosen not to display it, but if yours does display an excerpt, you can fill that in here. So just a quick sentence to summarize what the blog post is about and what people can expect. The blog URL, um, this will automatically populate based on the title of the blog post that you've written in there, but you can also edit this. And if you are gonna edit it, you want to make sure you edit it before you publish the post, because otherwise this can lead to broken links and issues um, with links across your site. So just make sure that you edit the post URL to be what you want before you publish the post. And this is essentially just what appears after your domain. So for me, that would be byrosanna.co.uk forward slash blog forward slash new post. You can't edit the blog bit, um, but you can edit everything that comes after blog.
You can also choose who the author is of the post if you have multiple people accessing your website and creating content for your website, but most of my clients don't tend to use that or have that option, so you can just leave that as you. And there are some other settings here and you can delete or duplicate the post from here as well. There are some other settings that you definitely want to um, look at before publishing the post still, so head into the options tab. Um, and we'll come back to status in a minute, but this is also where you can add tags and categories to the blog post. Now, categories is a useful way for you to, I guess, categorize the different blog posts that you're publishing on your blog. And when you categorize your blog posts, it means that you're able to let your website visitors filter for the specific categories that they're interested in. So you'll see on my blog, I've got this um, filter, which lets people choose what category um, of content they're interested in and selects that, and then it will just display the posts that have been categorized with that category. Now I've got quite a few, but I've been blogging for eight years. Um, I've got hundreds and hundreds of posts on my blog, and that's why I have all these categories, but I'd usually recommend starting with three to five categories. And again, if you're not sure what categories you should have and what types of topics you should be talking about on your blog, that's where my blogging with purpose course will be really helpful for you. So you just wanna start typing to either create or select a pre-existing category here, and it will add it to the post. The same thing is true with tags. It's just another way that you can add extra information or filtering um, settings to your post. I don't personally use tags on my blog post. Um, they don't really have any function on my website, but that's just another way of adding kind of extra information or categorizing posts as well. But categories is the main one here. You also have the ability to enable or disable comments on your blog post as well from here, or you can do that in your main kind of website settings and just turn it off across your entire blog, but this is where you can switch it on or off per post. And again, before you hit publish, you just want to hop over into the SEO tab and give your post an SEO title that is optimized for the keywords that you want this blog post to be found for. And I talk more about this within my course and how to structure all of your posts for SEO, getting your blog posts actually ranked on search engines, so check that out. Um, but it is optional, automatically this will just be the title of the blog post that you've written anyway, um, and the first few lines of text on your blog post, but you can set this manually to what you want it to be. I typically don't use any of these three uh, options here at the bottom on the left hand side, so you can just ignore these. But then once you're ready and you've done all of these settings, just head into options and where it says status, um, you can see it is just saved as a draft for now, but you can now click published and it will automatically, if you click save, that will then publish the post to your website, it will be live. Um, alternatively, you can select scheduled and you can schedule it for a time in the future as well. And you, if you scroll down, you can choose what time you want it to post out automatically as well. Um, so that's useful if you don't want this post to be posted out right now, but you don't wanna to have to be on your computer in the blogging backend in order for you to post this post. So once your post is live, you'll be able to view it on your live website. You'll be able to copy the link and share that blog post to wherever you like to promote it. Um, and just a note as well, something that I find um, a lot easier than starting a brand new post from scratch every time is you can, as I showed you before, duplicate existing posts that you like the layout of and just edit them to what you need. So let's say that I really like um, the look of this post. I'm gonna click on the three dots here and duplicate it. And it's gonna create an exact copy of that post and save it as a draft in my blog area. If I go into edit it now, I can literally just change the title um, and make any edits that I need to the content. Obviously you want to change it, but again, rather than just hitting publish up at the top or schedule, you want to save it so that it saves as a draft, exit, and then you want to go into the settings for this blog post. And this is really important because when you duplicate a blog post, it will automatically copy across the featured image, which you obviously want it to be different for this new post. So just click remove, and then you can upload a new featured image instead, which will display um, on your blog page here. It will also copy across the excerpt, which you're not going to want to have there. And it will copy the blog post URL and it will just add a random string of numbers at the end, which you definitely don't want as well. You want to make this um, relevant um, to the new title of your new blog post there as well. So just make sure that's set and also update the SEO settings if you want to manually do that um, as well. 
and make sure that the category is the correct category that you want. If, for example, this new blog post was actually about blogging rather than business, what I would do is tick on this, delete the category. This won't delete the category from your entire blog. It will just delete it from the post. And now I'm going to search for the blogging category here and click save. And that will save um, the new category to it. Obviously, you then want to publish it by going to options status and then select published and click save and it will automatically publish to your website. I hope you found this helpful, but as I say, anything to do with the actual strategy and content creation behind blogging, go and check out my Blogging with Purpose online course.